What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to animate moving objects in twin motion using animators. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So before we get started, quick reminder, there's less than a week left to get discounted access to the Twin Motion Essentials course in early access. So this course is a start to finish guide on how to use Twin Motion. So we get really in depth on everything from importing your models to working with materials and lighting, um, using the site tools, basically everything in Twin Motion. Um, this will kind of teach you how to use that and some more specific examples. So this is currently an early access and it's available for 50% off. So if that's something you're interested in, you can check that out through the end of the wink at the rendering essentials.com slash Twin Motion course. All right, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about how we might animate the movement of things like doors as well as things like windows in twin motion, other things as well. But um, let's say, for example, that we had this door and we wanted to animate it. Well, twin motion has tools called animators that you can find by going to library tools and you can apply them to objects. So in this case, I want to add a rotator object wherever I want this door to be. And so basically what we want to do is we want to drag that in and we want to set the location and then notice how right now nothing is happening, right? I walk up to this door, nothing is happening at all. But what we can do is we can click on this option right here to link this to an object. So when I do that, I can click on an object right here. We'll notice what that's going to do is that's going to make this object move like this. Okay, and so let's take a look at what that did. So basically what that did is that created a rotator object right here and it actually moved that door into the rotator. Well, the problem is the handle on this door got moved in here separately, right? So the handle's not getting picked up. And so that's not really that big of a deal because what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we just wanna click on this button right here again. And we just wanna click on this in order to add this object. And there's actually two handles, but we can click in here and we can add them into this animation object. So now, um, if I was to set this on the ping pong animation right here, notice how those handles are moving along with our door. So now this door is opening and closing. And so we also want to adjust the speed, right? So I'm going to bring the speed down to maybe like point two or something like that. So it's going to move a lot slower. So now this door is rotating out and in but it's doing it kind of endlessly. And so we can adjust that by going over here and setting our animation to once like this. So then what that means is that means that, that door is going to animate open one time. And I want it to animate in the other direction. So I'm going to type in negative 90 degrees like this. Now, the problem is our door has now opened, but we also want it to close. And so what we want to do is we want to add a trigger to this. We can click on the more to set what that is, but we basically want to set this so that when the camera gets within three meters, of the store, it's going to open. So now I'm gonna click back out of this. Now what's gonna happen, and we might set this to maybe like one meter or something like that instead. But now we've got this trigger area where if I move within a meter of the door, it's going to open up like this. So now this is a real time door that's going to react based on my camera location right here. And so we can do the same thing with sliding objects as well. So we've got this object right here. And instead of adding a rotator, what I want to do is I want to go in here and I want to add a translator. So what a translator is going to do is it's going to take something and it's going to make it move instead. So I'm going to set my base point right here for this object. And I'm going to go ahead and toggle it on right here. But this is going to set my door so that it moves. And remember, we need to link something to it. So in this case, we're just going to come in here and click on this door right here. So now we've got our door moving, but it's moving in the wrong direction and it's moving too far, which is fine. We can fix all of that. So first off, I'm going to set my distance like 0.5 for just a second, um, just so that we have this in our frame. But we're going to go into our more and we want to set this so that it moves on the Y axis instead of on the Z axis like this. So now our door is moving back and forth. But a couple things. First off, our distance is still too high. So I'm going to maybe set this to like 0.4. There we go. That works pretty good. I'm going to bring my speed down as well to maybe like 0.2. Notice how our animation is playing properly. And again, we're going to set our trigger to um, camera only. We're going to set the trigger zone to one meter. So now when I get within a meter, of this object, it's going to slide like this. 
And you can kind of play around with that distance if you want to. So we could set this to maybe like two meters, just like this. And so this doesn't only work on doors, right? You could also do the same thing and bring a translator animation in here. So we could go to tools, animations, and apply a translator to this window. So we could start it right here, then link it to this object right here. Notice how we linked it to the wrong thing. There we go. And so we're going to set this so that it moves downward by negative 0.25 or negative 0.5 meters like this. Notice how you can also, by the way, with the object link function selected, you can come in here and you can just click on objects instead of cutting and pasting them if you want to add them to that translator group like this. So you can also set this where it does that. So and I'm going to bring the speed down again to something like this. So now we've got a window that will open or close as well. And so another kind of fun application is you could also add a rotator to the center of this point right here. And then you could apply a car to it. So you could set this up where you have a car that actually turns 360 degrees like this. And so in this case, we don't want to set this to ping pong because that goes forward and back. We want to set it to a loop. And so what that's going to do is that's going to run the animation over and over and over again. And again, we could bring our speed down to something like this, but you can use this to create like turntable animations or something like that with very little issues. And so just to highlight a cool application of this, this is actually an animation that was created with this tool. And it's actually really clever because what they did is they've got this car that's moving, right? Or it looks like it's moving, but actually what's happening is everything else is rotating around. So they're using a rotator in order to actually rotate the city around the car and it makes it look like the car is moving. So let me see if there's a, uh, so they've taken a translator in a rotator and used it to make the car look like it's moving side to side like this, but then everything else rotates and moves. So they've got this set up where everything rotates and the car just kind of moves side to side like this. It's a really creative application of how to use um, the rotator functions inside of twin motion. So see how the city is actually rotating. So the whole city has a rotator applied to it. So it's super interesting, super cool. I can link to this video in the notes down below um, if you want to check out how they did it. All right, so I'll link to some other Twin Motion tutorials on this page. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you are interested in uh, learning more about how to use Twin Motion, make sure you check out that course that's on sale through the end of the week. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.